I have a word this morning. And I want to talk about broken things. Let's talk a little bit about broken things. There are many people who, when they come into the kingdom of God and they accept Jesus Christ, they go to churches and they, they hear other people talk about their lives and Christ and everything. Sometimes they're intimidated. Sometimes they feel as if they're not worthy to be used by God. There are some people that will make you think that you aren't worthy because they might know your story. And how many people know this morning that we all got a story? That's right. Amen. The only difference between some people who are in church and others come in church and they know about them is that you know their story and they don't know yours. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But that don't give you the right to be little or look down on someone who may not have made the same mistakes you make. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that is why we need to grow in the Word of God. Everybody needs to grow in the Word of God because mm -hmm. we have to stop seeing ourselves through other people's eyes. That's right. <clears throat> we have to. It's huge. It's the only way that we can go on and live the kind of lives that God has designed for us to live. We were created to have life and have it more abundantly. But we got to see that life through God's eyes. Amen? Amen? The enemy is using every weapon in his arsenal to keep people from their destiny. He ain't trying to get the people out there living like the devil. Because he already got them. It's the people who try to live for God and trying to follow God and trying to learn more about God. That's the people he want. Amen? Amen? There are people who think they are not worthy because of something they may have done in their past. We all have past. They may think that's that thing that they've done disqualifies them. There are other people who know they have done stuff in their past. But they use that as an excuse not to fully commit. Are you all hearing me? Because to be used by God, he says you must deny yourself. In these days and times, people ain't got time for God or nobody else. It's me, 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 and more of me. Even in churches, people will come to church and enjoy the service. Love the worship, love the word, love the cookies, and, 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 and love coming and eating the cakes and the cupcakes. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but the cupcakes didn't drop out the sky. That cupcake that you eat every week and you take it by and, and, you, and you think when you get here, it's supposed to be here. <laughs> Are you all hearing me? Yeah. Somebody committed to deny themselves from something else and take the time to bless God's people to bring her time. And you enjoy it. Amen. The musicians, the singers, the sound people, the people who set up. Are you all hearing me? Yes. And I thank God for them every week. I thank God for those people that, that, that decide to sacrifice their time and do the things that they do. And it's so easy for us to take these things for granted. But somebody made a commitment to God and say, God, I'm going to do this for you. This is my little niche and I'm going to do this for you. Because they could be doing something else. 
Amen? So some people use as an excuse, well, I'm not worthy. But what they really don't, they don't want to commit. They don't want to turn, they want to be able to turn over on Sunday morning and says, I don't feel like going to church this Let me watch football. And let's find if that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But y'all understand what I'm trying to say. Anytime you make a commitment, it's a serious commitment. But I want to talk about God uses broken things and He makes them beautiful. He's been doing it for a long time. You've heard that broken clouds pour out what? Rain. Broken soil prepares a field for planting. Broken crops yield seeds. And broken seeds give plants new life. These are broken things that become something else. And just like you and I, God can take our brokenness and make something beautiful out of it. And that is why we need to have God loudest in our ear. Because when somebody comes and says you are nothing, you need to know the word of God when he says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. You are special. And when that person comes and says you are nothing, it just bounce off because you already know who you are. That's right. <clears throat> are you all hearing me? That's right. So when you feel like some situation in life has you broken, be assured, God can utilize you for great things. Amen? Amen. Great things. Broken things can become blessed if God does the mending. Ooh. I want to read the words to a song by Matthew West. Listen to this song. How many times can one heart break? It was never supposed to be this way. Look in the mirror, but you find someone you never thought you'd be. Oh, but I can still recognize the one I love in your heart-stained eyes, your tear-stained eyes. I know you might not see him now, so lift your eyes to me. Because when you see broken beyond repair, I see healing beyond belief. When you see too far gone, I see one step away from home. When you see nothing but damaged goods, I see something good in the making. I'm not finished yet. When you see wounded, I see mended. You see your worst mistake, but I see the price I pay. There's nothing you could ever do to lose what grace has won. So hold on, it's not the end. No, this is where love work begins. I'm making all things new, and I will make a miracle of you. Isn't that beautiful? He <laughs> says, when you see wounded, I see mended. That's what God does. The problem is, a lot of people don't know that's what he does. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And those of us that know that that's what he does, we need to let other people know. Because he did it for us. All of us were messed up. All of us were broken. And he fixed us. 
And it's not about me being fixed to your liking. That's right. Hmm. Huh? Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Sometimes we want to be fixed to other people's liking. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, you still see yourself as wounded, not good enough. I read an article not too long ago about beaches and how things wash up onto the shore, onto the beaches. In certain parts of the world, they have beaches with sand, they have pebble beaches. And in places like Bermuda, and there's a beach in Russia, where guess what washes up on the shore? Glass. Glass washes up, washes up on the shore. Millions of pieces of glass. On those, on those beaches where glass wash up, many people just see them as pieces of junk. Don't have much meaning. It's, it's little more than garbage. <coughs> but for some people, they take that glass and they make something beautiful out. Some pieces are big as rocks, boulders, and then there are other pieces that are small as a pea. They vary in colors, green, reds, oranges, blues, whites, and the list goes on. I found it interesting how glass found its way onto the beaches. They came from bottles that were thrown into the sea many years ago. And from the constant elements, bashing of the waves, rubbing against the sand, they were broken. And then their edges were smooth off from the clashing of the waves and the constant moving against the sand. And they were polished by the elements. All the sharp edges were worn down till they were smooth. The longer the pieces of glass stayed in the sea, the more beautiful they became. But often, these pieces are trampled on by people walking on the beach. And the people don't even notice them. Because sea glass is considered nothing more than garbage. I think sea glass is an example of God's amazing grace. These broken pieces of glass remind us of how God can bring beauty out of brokenness. How he can take something that has been broken smooth its edges, polish it, and make it an attractive treasure. Most of us have made many mistakes in our lives, perhaps even been used and abused by others, then discarded and considered worthless, like the glass. Just like the broken glass, we may have even cut someone in our brokenness. Because there are people that walk on glass and they get cut. Amen? Amen. Maybe in your brokenness, you may have cut others with your words, with your actions. Maybe a sharp word or a response has cut someone close to you. A spouse, a child, a friend, even an enemy. And because of these cuts, there are wounds. Wounds in your relationships that are yet to be healed. 
You know what they say? Hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. Hurt people. Even the best of us have made mistakes. Big mistakes. Now I was gonna say, is there anybody in here who hasn't made any mistakes? And I know who was gonna raise his hand. See? <laughs> <laughs> the word wasn't on my mouth yet, but he didn't. <laughs> Even the best of us have made mistakes. We've all done things and we've perpetuated wounds and brokenness and pain by our words and our actions. Amen? Amen. Well, here's the good news. There is a God who can bring beauty out of brokenness. Our loving Lord desires to polish us in the sea of his love and the ocean of his grace, the clashing waves of the trials that he allows us to go through. He is shaping us into something beautiful and he wastes nothing. He desires to smooth out all our rough edges. And I know I have some rough edges. He's still working on me and smoothing some of them out. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Though we are broken, we are still his special treasure. But the only way for us to know that we are his treasure is to go into the book. We let other people tell us what they think of us. And we go on that. Amen? Amen. We need to start listening to what God say about us. And go on this. We are his special treasure. Because you know sometimes you can go <coughs> through some stuff in life and you see yourself as nothing. Stuff just don't work out and more stuff don't. You see yourself as a failure. We've all made mistakes, but you can fix that. You are not the sum of the things that you've done. But that's in the book. The book will tell you that. People can judge you by what they see, and that's in the book too. Man judged by what they see, but God what? Looks at the heart. Yeah. <clears throat> like the pieces of sea glass on the beach, we are not too small for him to notice. He sees our brokenness. He takes special interest in our pain. He does. Our pain has pierced the heart of God with sorrow. Now, God don't cause pain, but he'll allow it and use it for his glory, for his purpose. Amen? Amen. Because causing pain and allowing pain is two different things. Now, he allowed you to go through a situation that may cause pain. Amen? But God don't want to bring pain on you to hurt you, to discourage you. And you got to understand that. Many times, God uses brokenness to bless others. And we just went through a series of the function of comfort. Remember? Yes. Using something that you go through, you think it's for you, but it's for somebody else. Because he can bring beauty out of brokenness. Broken lives, broken hearts, broken dreams, broken bodies, broken promises. He can use them all and bring something beautiful out of it. Those of you that have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Psalms 34. Or you can get so. Psalms 34. And listen to what the Word of God says. I'm going to read from the... 17th verse. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will overtake the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Amen? Amen. God watches out over us. And the things that we go through, he still cares for us. He cares for us. Sometimes God will redeem your story by surrounding you with people who need to hear your past. And the reason why he do that is so that your past don't become their future. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> God can use our past problems to prevent future pains. From the mess of brokenness, God can make a message of blessing. I'm talking about brokenness now. Because the world's view of brokenness is different. Remember, we, we're talking about changing the way we think. And the world has a way of viewing a lot of things. And we got to start seeing things different. <clears throat> or we're going to be stuck in a bad place. Ooh. Because as far as the world is concerned, when you broke, you're done. Mm -hmm. Broke things are picked up and thrown in the garbage. That's right. Hello? Mm -hmm. Huh? That's right. Some man will tell you, can't use that no more. Too far gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, but God. Thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Because yeah. many of us have been broken and discarded yep. and thrown in the trash to be used or thought of no more. But God can mend us. Amen? Amen. Out of a brutal test, God can bring a beautiful testimony. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Yes, he can. And this ain't something somebody just told me or I read in a book. I'm speaking from personal testimony. Because this is what Jesus did for me. I was broken, a discarded vessel, struggling with addiction on the streets, a piece of broken glass in the midst of many broken pieces of glass. But God saw me. God saw that I still had potential. I was misguided. I was making bad choices. And I didn't know what he could do for me. Has nothing to do with making you perfect. Has everything to do with telling you, I forgive you for what you've done. Now let me teach you to be better. I choose to do that for you because that's how much I love you. Nobody loved me like God loved me. Amen. That's right. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. I had a special relationship with my mother. But my mother didn't love me like God loved me. And my mother loved me. <laughs> <laughs> And I knew it. <laughs> Amen? Are you all understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. God has a special love for us. And we can't see ourselves as so far gone that that love can't reach us. That we're so messed up and broken that he can't mend us. And still use us in his kingdom. See, that's what men will do. Tell you you ain't good enough. You lost that opportunity when you mess up. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning there's life after mess. 
if you come to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. Now other people might tell you that. But Jesus is waiting for you to come. Just as you are, he'll take you and teach you how to see yourself out through his eyes. You were born special. And I was out there, messed up. But then I had an encounter with the living God. And I was immersed in the sea of his love and baptized in the ocean of his grace. And because of Jesus in my life, my life has never been the same. Now let me tell you something. There are some people who still will look at me and say, you ain't good enough. Are you all hearing me? I'm here this morning to let you know, don't worry about your haters. Thank God for that. Pray for them. But you know something? They keep you near the cross. <laughs> you all laugh, I'm serious. They keep you near the cross. You can't worry about them. You have to see yourself through God's eyes. Because you can't do nothing with them. I'm not good enough for them, but for him. For him. He died for me. Who died for you? Jesus. And when you know that someone loved you enough to die for you, you don't worry about the noise out there. That's right. I know I am special because someone gave their life for me. If that ain't special, I don't know what it is. How much people are you ready to give your life for? Because they're so special to you. Don't answer that. Keep that. <laughs> Deal with that in the bathroom when you go. <laughs> Look in the mirror and say, <laughs> You all see how serious this is? That's why you can't worry about people who don't think you're good enough. That's why you read the word and find that you're already good enough because he doesn't do it. When we was out there messing up, he already died. He didn't wait till I was right. But he made the way for me when I decided to turn around and look at him. It was already done. Are you all hearing me? He already died for you. He already died for the mess. He already died for the mess you ain't even made yet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. You see why we got to look at him? Nobody treats you as special as him. Family, when Jesus hung on that cross of Calvary, he was assaulted by our sins, crushed by our condemnation. His body was bruised. His heart was broken. Yet he was willing to take all of that, all that abuse, to save you and to save me. We were worth it to him. You all hear what I'm saying? We were worth it to him. And through his brokenness, we are now blessed and saved. Amen? Amen. Today I want to invite you to give God your broken glass the broken glass and pieces of your life. Give him your bleeding heart, your shattered dreams, your broken body, those broken promises, that difficult situation, whatever it may be, it is not beyond salvageable. You all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't let nobody fool you and lie to you and take you too far. That's right. <coughs> Because as long as you have breath, That's right. you have hope. Amen? Amen? Amen. You are more than the sum of your past mistakes. It's not too late. You have not gone too far. I don't care what it is. 
The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. And he will use anyone he can, anything he can, mm -hmm. anywhere he can, to discourage you and make you feel as if you ain't good enough and what you have done has made you disqualified. That's right. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. I don't care how much tattoos you got on. I don't care what color your hair is. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Yes. See, because people will put you on the outside because of certain things you do or even how you look. Are y'all hearing me? I will repeat. <coughs> Don't worry about people. They ain't got no heaven to put you in. Amen. <laughs> and if you read the book, you'll hear about heaven. See, people don't think about heaven. Amen? Amen. And let's remember, God has always, always, because if you read the book, you'll know, use people who aren't exactly perfect. Are you all hearing me? Amen. If you read the book, you'll know. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. You don't use the perfect and the picture perf perfect people with the picture perfect past. Joseph was used to save God's people from famine. But Joseph's family was so dysfunctional, his own brother sold him into slavery. Who was so perfect for that? Mm -hmm. Huh? Gideon. Gideon was afraid. He was a whip. But God used him to lead an army. Moses had a stuttering problem, plus he was a murderer. God used him. God used Abraham, the father of faith. And he had a serious problem with lying. I know this because I read the book. <laughs> if you read the book, you'll find out these things too. Rahab was a prostitute. Huh? Noah. People talk about, we talk about Noah all the time, but Noah was a drunk. And when he get drunk, he take off all his clothes. Yes. <laughs> and that's in the book. Yes. And I lie. That's right. Amen? And we ain't even going to David. Oh, Lord, yes. David take one look at a woman, had her husband killed so he could get the woman. And you know what position he held when he did that? King. Oh. The top man. Who would the God call David? A man after my own heart. <laughs> and you really think you can do something that God can't put grace on you and love you and, Amen. <laughs> and fix you up? Right. That's right. Huh? It's the fixer uppers, that's my word, <laughs> that appreciate that God cared enough to give them another chance. Because there are people, because of what you've done, they will not give you another chance. God is a God of second chances. And I don't care what it is you've done, you are not too far gone. Thank you. That the love of God and the grace of God cannot cover you, bring you back, dust you off, and say, now I want you to do some work for me in the kingdom. I choose you. I choose the one who got half the alphabet behind his name because he's so educated. Hmm. See, it's them learning ones that too smart. Mm -hmm. They know everything. God can't use them. He can't even talk to them. They're ready to question him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? But when you know you are a mess, when you know he has come into your heart and touched you, 
and willing to give you a chance at life when nobody else would do it. Those, the broken people, they're the ones that appreciate it. You know what I mean? Because I appreciate it. I was a mess. But God gave me a chance. <coughs> and now I see myself through his eyes. He is the lifter of my head. I don't worry about what I've done. And I don't worry about people who want to carry and hold on to the things that I've done. If they want that load, here. That's right. That's right. I try to run from that. Now, if you won't carry it, I try to get as far away as possible from that. And God tell me he has thrown my past into the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. That's why when you bring it up and throw it in my face, I don't worry about you. Right. Well, you all notice I talk about my drug problem first because I put it out here so you can't use it against me. That's right. <laughs> Amen? Amen, that's right. Boom, it's done. <laughs> now let's talk about something else. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And this is how we have to be. <clears throat> we have to move on. We all have mess in our lives. We've all been broken, but God can make beauty out of brokenness. Don't sit and stew because somebody makes you feel like you're not good enough because of something that you may have or may not have done. Get into God's word. Too many believers, and it's sad to say it, are lazy. And that's why they suffer. Because they don't know who they are. And when somebody else put a label on them, they wallow in that. But if they have been in the Word, they will know that is who they are. Are you all hearing me? So today, I invite you to let God polish you, refine you. You can't change the past, but you can walk into a new future. Amen. And you, you can get to a place in your life where you won't allow your past to stop you excuse me, from walking into your future. Because if you're not careful, you, you will allow your past to be an anchor that will hold you in a place. Are you all hearing me? It ain't about, see, God already did everything he needed to do here. <laughs> it's not that he ain't doing it. We now need to walk in what we need to walk in to get what he has for us. To be who he wants us to be. It's already done. On the cross he said, it is finished. That's right. Everything I had to do, I didn't do. I had to take on all this stuff. All of that that you weren't about to care, I didn't take that on. That's why I'm here. Now I can die and carry that. You don't got to worry about that no more. Amen? Amen. I, God, I, Jesus, remember this. He is saying, I will clean your slate. Yeah. <coughs> Hear it again. I, Jesus, will clean your slate. He never comes and says, well, you did this, and you did that, and you did that. No. When you acknowledge his presence in your life, all he will say is, I will clean your slate. Don't bring up what you did. Because he ain't bringing it up. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. Too many times now we, but you know I, no, no. You are worthy because he makes you worthy. It's something he did. He gives us his righteousness. It ain't about us. Grace. Mercy. Forgiveness. And most of all, Love. Love. He loves us. So let God refine you this morning. And most of all, let his beauty be reflected in your life. Through that 
brokenness. I want us to pray this morning. I want you to know that if you are lonely, you can find comfort. If you are discouraged, you can find hope. If you are poor in spirit, know this morning that you can find strength. <clears throat> and if you feel broken, know that he can mend you. Are you hearing me, family? God can mend you this morning. I'm going to pray that we all are made whole in Him this morning. So I want you to bow your heads. This is not and I want you to step out of faith here. This is not about what you have done. What you may have done. <clears throat> this is not this morning about what's wrong. Because everybody got wrongs. This morning, I want you to consider is there anything too hard for God? We ain't worrying about what you should have done. What you could have. Should have. We're saying right now, Jesus, thank you. That you have cleaned my state. We were all a mess. We've all made mistakes, have regrets. Ain't about that this morning. We are moving forward. Thank you, Jesus, that today I know you have cleaned my slate. I give myself to you. Have mercy on me, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. I want to move forward in you. Help my unbelief, Lord. I believe that you have forgiven me. I believe it. And I believe that you have wiped my slate clean in this moment right now. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you. Your word tells me that if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, right now I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. That they move forward in you from this moment on. It's not about what I could have done, what I should have done, what I didn't do. That's past. We look to you. We look to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I come against the enemy and any plan that he has in everyone's and any life in this room right now in the name of Jesus. We pull down the strongholds. And I pray right now through the power of your Holy Spirit that you will now empower us mm -hmm. to put your word into practice in our lives. Give us the strength that we need to move forward regardless of what we may have done. Lord, you've forgiven us. Now help us to move forward and forgive ourselves. 
so that the unforgiveness that we may hold on ourselves, others may not be able to use that. So we come against that in Jesus' name. Because when you move forward, nobody else can do nothing to you. Thank you, Lord. For making me realize that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. And even though I may have made some mistakes, I'm about to change that right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fa Father, I pray for those that are ailing and sick among us. That have ailments. I ask that you touch their bodies right now and bring healing. Mm -hmm. Namely, Virginia, her legs, Lord. Touch her legs right now in the name of Jesus. Heal her. I pray for Judy that you will touch her body. Clear up her airways, Lord, that she may breathe freely. Take the pain away from her back, her legs. Strengthen her body. So that she can walk in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. Anyone that's going through any situation in their families, I pray for them right now in Jesus' name that you will give them the strength that they need. Bring peace to them right now. The peace, Lord, that only you can give. The peace that passes all understanding in the midst of the storm, knowing that you are with them. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you. thank you for hearing us. Thank you for what you're about to do. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Brokenness. Some people beat themselves up so much, they don't even allow what other people to say. But what other people say, no, you're not broken to get it because they can busy beat themselves up. I come against that spirit in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, even you shouldn't be the loudest in your ear. Because <laughs> you don't always think the right things. That's right. Amen? Amen? We need the word, family. We need the word. We need those scriptures going through our head. Even when we beat ourselves up. Amen? Amen. So I hope that something that was said today that you can take it and apply it to your lives. God take woundedness, brokenness, and make something beautiful out of it. I am here to tell you that you are not too far gone. And don't think that you are not worthy. Or something that you have done in your past somehow disqualifies you from working in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And we pull that down in Jesus' name. Amen. You are worthy. Nothing you have done disqualifies you. Because everybody in this room has done something that if somebody else hears about it, they'll say you shouldn't even be here. <laughs> huh? That's right. We can't worry about what people think. Take it to the Lord and leave it there. Amen? Amen. And get up and hold your head up high. And live this abundant life that Jesus has already died for. Amen? Amen. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, I want us to take the Lord's Supper together.